crazy day. The landscape has changed. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, I'm not sure I completely understand exactly what's happened. Um, you know what I mean? Like, there's limited information um, because MLB hasn't made a statement and um, Fanatics hasn't made a statement that I'm aware of. Again, I was at work. This was happening in the daytime. And then, you know, I don't know if it's if the situation is that fluid, that things have changed now. Yeah. But what do you think, like, the biggest effect this is going to have? On, on just how cards are now, like just the market for the next three years. What do you think the biggest effect is going to be on like the modern market with tops? Do you think it's well, going to be crazy? Like, yo, know, cards, you know, because think if tops wants to make as much money as possible for the next couple of years, you know, I mean, I don't know. I'm just. Yeah. Will they, will they, will everything be, will they put more than what they usually do? Like will sets be jammed with autos or like as it goes into their last few years, will they just be like, F it, yo, I'm, I'm going to dump crazy stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like how will they handle those years? Or, or will they just be like, I don't really care. See, my, my, my whole point with this is it's almost like a setup that Fanatics is going to buy out tops because what is fanatic see that's the thing we don't know what's fanatics plan like i mean i, I want to hear something like what are they the creating cards like what are they I, it just it seems like a setup for for them to take over tops that's i mean that would be the easiest situation no yeah i mean i've seen people that were saying similar things on twitter like oh maybe t you know they'll they'll buy out tops um but you know the the thing that that i find a little bit even crazier that is that like if tops is if tops is gonna just be gone like if tops is gone from baseball like that's yeah. the crazy thing like yo it's it's not even like you know okay you know this is a five-year deal which would be oh no enough how crazy would it have been if you just heard listen tops is gonna give it to panini for five years i mean mlb is gonna give it to panini that would be crazy enough but to hear that like you know that's it it's exclusive it's mlb NBA, NFL, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, if you just think about it, what is Topps going to have left? Soccer? It's really what they do next, right? I mean, Top. let's be real, Topps is a legendary company, but they have fell off in recent years. We've talked about that on the show. You know, I mean, their product. But for them to just not from falling off to just be gone is a crazy thing. That's the crazy part about it. Yeah, it's that that's the thing that for me is just like I, it's hard for me to uh, like have some kind of a uh, comparable situation. Like I was thinking like it's kind of like if you wanted to buy a car every year, like, you know, you know, they make a new Cadillac every year. Yeah. And you've been buying them since you were a kid. And all of a sudden they're like, yeah, we're not making Cadillacs anymore. Cadillac's not making cars anymore. They're out. Yeah. I think what took this to another level is that the MLB and the MLB Plays Association is, Association is going to have equity in the company. Now, that changes the whole landscape of, of it, right? You know, it's not just a partnership, you yeah. know, in terms of, like, licensing. It's like you're going to have equity in the company. So business is business, you know? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I mean, but uh, when you take away the business, I get, see, I get the business, but as a fan of the hobby and – that's the part of it, you know, that's, that's hard to just understand. Obviously, like you said, in, in the days and weeks to come, we'll probably hear more, more stuff to come out of it. But to hear just today, you know, just driving, you working, I, I was running around the same way. And I'm like, what? Like, you know, I, I've seen so many people wrote, who is this April Fool's? Who's joking? People didn't even believe it, you know? So. Yeah. All right. So here's another thing that's kind of crazy about this, right? Like the people, the Bowman people that only, all they do is Bowman. Like, you know, these guys, the Bowman Chrome dudes, and like, you know, that's a cool niche of car, card collecting for modern cards. That's a massive amount of people like that are just like, yeah, that's it. Bowman's done. Cause can you, like, cause Top Zone's the name Bowman, you know, and they, Bowman is obviously not the company from the 50s. It's the name that Tops had. So if Tops is out of baseball, 
Bowman's out of baseball, man, that's that's. Cool. But this is why I can't see this happening. I can't see the hobby without tops and Bowman. Where is it? What happens? Where does it go? Where they just create their own cards? I, I don't understand the logistics of it. <laughs> I don't get it. That's Probably. why it, in my mind, it just feels like they would have to buy them out and just continue, you know, the brand and, and, and design it a different way and whatever else take it on their own. But like to just shut it down where there's no tops and Bowman, what, what is the hobby? I don't understand. I mean, like, and, and, you know, in the last 10 years, of course, with um, the Bowman firsts being, you know, of course, because of Mike Trout, pretty much, and the people that pumped up his cards and everything, and the fact that mm-hmm. that is Mike Trout. But, um, you know, I mean, Bowman first have been around before then, you know, the first Bowman Chrome rookie and all that stuff. They've had that since the late 90s. But, like, it became, you know, once they were, you know, because when you think about, like, even the, the Pujols one, like, that was a redemption auto. And, like, the, uh, the each year one, that was, like, super rare. When they started making them, you know, in like 2009 Bowman, where they made more like a bunch of autos and they had like the parallels, the autos, the, yep. the first prospect. But like that was crazy. And like those are the most sought after cards in the hobby right now. Of all the, mm-hmm. you know, they're more important than the rookie card or they go for more. They're fancier, the whole thing. You know this. So now it's like, so the last kid, you know, Bowman draft 2025 is going to be the last of the Bowman first. Is that what you're telling me? Like, all right. So here's another thing that somebody said. To, you know, that I saw on Twitter, right? And they said that um, this is the first, Tops has been doing this for 70 years and MLB is going to give it off to a company that has never made a trading card ever. Ever. That's my point. What are they going to do? A fina- like, that's why I keep saying I can only see a buyout in my eyes until I see a plan what their plan is. And obviously if they're not going to buy tops out and continue to make tops Bowman cards, then I would, I can't wait to see their plan. What are the cards going to look like? What are they going to, you know, like all these things, there's yeah. so much to, 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 to go along with that. Like, it's easy to say, Oh, we're going to buy tops, you know, um, tops don't have the right. Anymore. Okay. Well, like if it was Panini, we were talking about this, and if this whole thing was Panini's going to, you know, get the rights or whatever and buy t- that's different. We know what Panini does. We know what they do. We'd be like, OK, they're going to have some ill refractors. They're going to have this, you know, all that is going to be stained glass, all these different cars Maybe. that we know. Beautiful cards. What this is why the first day it's tough to say, but like I can't wait to hear and see their plan. Because if they're created, if Tops is no more and Bowman's no more, and they're not buying them out to keep that same look, what do we have? We just got bought out by a company who is about merchandise, you know, and you know, jerseys and hats and whatever else, like cards. <laughs> that's just crazy, bro. It really is. If you really think about it, that's crazy. You know. It's crazy. It's like, you know, you, you, uh, you hope sometimes you, you don't uh, wish for you get, you know, you get what you wish for or whatever. Like, you know, oh, Tops, I wish the Monopoly would be over. Well, it is over, but it's not over yeah. the way we thought it was going to be over, you know, which is kind of, which is really, really crazy. You know, is it going to be Fanatics Series 1, 2020, 2026 Fanatics Series 1? Is that what's going to be happening? Yeah. Like, I don't have any doubt that fanatics can be like, all right, we're going to hire all the best people from tops. Oh, yeah. Best people and all that stuff. But like, yo, rip the, the tops rookie logo, man. The, the gold <sighs> cup rookie, that's done because that's its tops thing. That's like the guys at tops every year. They, they yep. been doing it since, you know, whatever. Uh, I think like 58, actually. And he started the cards in 60 or whatever. And um, that's, a, that's a beautiful aspect of card collecting. Yep. You know, that's going to be gone. Um, it's just crazy, man. It's really. Don't, uh, listen, if, if I had to put my money on it right now, like I, like I said, from the start, I feel like they're going to end up buying tops out and continue in the brand because I can't see that disappearing. And even though it's three years, I still don't think it's enough time for them to do what they would have to do in terms like you just said, and it's not just tops series one, series two, you, you got Bowman, you know, you got Bowman, you got Sapphire, top Sapphire, you got right. gallery, you got fire, you got all these uh, people love these, these, these different off brands. You know what I'm saying? It goes on throughout the year. So it's like, 
to just start scratch, start from scratch. Like you said, we're going to have series one fanatic. Like, yeah, I can't comprehend it. So <laughs> honestly, I can't wait to hear more info and just read about it and see what, you know, their plans are, you know, for, for the coming for when they do come into it. But uh, they need to keep, they need to just somehow buy tops out. Like you said, man, it's like, I don't it's mind like, when Panini does like select or dominate. Oh yeah, you now it's fine. They got super awesome people doing it. They're yeah. you know whatever. So if they're gonna do that, fine. Like just absorb tops, take the people from tops. But I don't know if they want to do that, man. I don't know if they want to do that. That's but that's like, the whole cra- that's the whole craziness of it. I mean, that's why I'm so interested to hear their plan. Another thing is that, like, you know, this is like a baseball card crisis, right? This isn't just for if you collect other stuff. I know I just said that, but like, I was thinking about it today and I'm like, why aren't there more people on Twitter going nuts? And then I realized most of the people that I follow, you know, they collect whatever NBA, whatever it is. It's cool. I'm sure many of them collect baseball, but this is a baseball specific crisis of the baseball card yeah. now, right? Yep. It's just crazy because no matter how you look at it, like, your world's turned upside down. Uh, whether that say fanatics makes the best cards ever, you're still going to be like, yo man, tops, tops is the joint, you know? And just when that, you know, when it, so. when it drops, you know, series one, I mean, regardless if, if, you know, the design is not what you like from year to year or certain years are better than, but it's still tops. Like you said, it's still opening day. You know, it's just like all connected, you know, everything is connected to not have that. I mean, like I said, it's definitely a super shock today just to even think about that. And it's funny because, like you said before, we kept talking about how, like, oh, tops fell off this year. Panini's going to come in. And now now we're saying there's no tops. And now we're, like, sitting here like two sad puppies, you know? I, you know, it, it's just a lot to, to take in, you know? And there's so many things that we don't know about. Um, but I'm sure that, like, things will get cleared up soon. Uh, I imagine a lot of people are going to be really mad. And, and it's going to affect – I don't know, man. Fanatics is going to have to really do, you know, some serious work. But f- from what I'm seeing, it's like uh, Fanatics, like MLB owns, you know, equity in Fanatics. So now like the deal, and I mean, this is just from the info that I saw. It was like the deal supposedly is that Fanatics is just like, yo, we'll just give you equity in the yeah. company. And like, don't worry about the royalty system because they used to, you know, uh, license the intellectual property of the NF uh, of the MLB, you know. Um, but now it's like, no, forget about that royalty system. Now we're just gonna give you like equity in the company. I guess it's too with Manfred, you know. I mean, they already won his head. I seen, you know, online people always, you know, they're blaming him already for this, and you know, so many change. Like it's just another change with him, you know. Everything, you know, change runner on second. You know, and all these, you know, they're trying to change DH. And it's just with him, everything has changed. So if it was going to happen at any time, it makes sense for it to happen now. They want to speed up the game. They don't want the 16 in a game. You know, they don't want the whole, you know, song and dance between the pitcher and the batter and stepping out, calling time. You know, I, I just think they should leave the game alone, man. If you don't like baseball, you're not going to, you know, you could go to Dominican Republic. And go to Korea and see places in Japan and people absolutely love baseball and they're watching yep. the game. So if we're not doing it over here, guess what? There's a whole world full of people doing it. And, 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 die, and a diehard fan is not if the if the game is three hours and ten minutes or three hours and fifty minutes, a diehard fan doesn't really care. You know, I was watching some footage of uh, Ron Gidgey pitching uh, <laughs> recently and he just pitched quick, you know. Like now get guys are getting mad, like, yeah, hey, don't quick pitch me. He's yeah. just looking quickly, you know. Yep get the ball back to him and that's it. And um, it's, it's, you know, I, I, I always hear people say it's the pace of the game that they want to change, not the length of the game. And, you know, to what you're saying, yeah, I, I totally agree with that, but it's the way the game's managed nowadays, as opposed to True. the way game is managed in the sixties or seventies, you know, where guys didn't use like nine pitches. Now they've, you know, slowed that down a bit with the three, you know, face three guys rule, but it's still, you know, the game's a joke. But also, they didn't have notes in their hats. Right, right, right. You know, like pulling the hat up. Oh, yeah, throw some. T-. It's like, come on, bro. You don't know the game. You got to look in your hat. After These guys are crazy. They, they just had a mound visit, and then they look in the hat again. It's like, play the game. Everything is not about, you know what I'm saying? Go with your gut. You know, play the game. Figure it out. But everything can't be so robotic. You know, it's like, and that's, yeah. what, that's what you're saying, and that's what managers are. Everything is like, 
nothing's with their gut, you know, instead of saying, oh, this guy's hot. I don't care if it's a lefty. I'm leaving him in. You know, I don't care. I'm gonna, you know, and, that, and that's what baseball is. Everything can't be, you know, uh, a grass and a thing. So I think that that slows the game too, you know. And plus with the replays now, you know, you could add five, ten minutes to a game right there. Yeah, it's true. Um, yeah, no, it, it's, it's crazy. You know, at the beginning of the year when we were talking about why the batting averages were so low and obviously the, you know, the um, spider tag had to do with that, the substances are coming up, but also like when you know exactly where, like you're, you're like, all right, look, man, that spot between first and second right there, like eight feet between, you know, that's where he hits the ball 70% of the time. I mean, when you have that kind of information all the time and you just go to it, like, you know, are you going to be right all the time? No, of course not. But what you just said is interesting because it's kind of like if you were a poker player and you played the same way all the time, you'd just be figured out right away. Like you wouldn't be sitting there. You'd be crushed. Picture. You'd just be like, oh, this guy. And we're talking about the greatest players in the world. We're not talking about if you went to a one-two game in the Borgata. <laughs> you know, we're talking about the best players in the world, but the best players in the world should all know how to adapt, right? If you were at a poker table with Phil Helmuth and Doyle Brunson and Negron, you, you know, these dudes play, these dudes might play for three hours and play seven different ways. Right. No, that's. Because, and that's what you're saying. It's, but it should be like that with baseball. If you're a great player, whether you're six, five or you're five, seven, you know, if somebody's playing you to right field, you should be able to smack one down the line. So the next time you're up, they're like, oh, shoot, we can't shift this much. Maybe right, we'll right. shift, but we got to, you know, that's baseball. Back to what you're just saying about like, the, you know, to the poker thing, and it's like, you know, the whole, like, you know, nowadays uh, poker people talk about game theory, optimal, and all that stuff, and that just basically means to mix up your play. Yeah. These guys don't mix up their play. Like, oh, well, let's not steal second base because he might get thrown out, and if we do, we're going to give up an out. Well, let's not bunt him over because we're going to give out a precious out. It's like, dude, you got to get the ball in play. you got to take it. this. you got to flip up your play, or else I don't know, man. I just find it to be boring, bro. Like, Watching the games recently with the Yankees have been great. They're bumping, yep. they're stealing bases. Whole and, different team, and now they're winning. You know, but uh, and it was funny because Paul O'Neill was like, "Oh yeah, this team's this team's getting fun." You know how Paul O'Neill's? I mean, he, he's probably thinking to himself, "Like, man, this team's boring the shit out of me for the last <laughs> fucking." Oh, six forget it. But you know what? It's it's like you said. They're playing baseball. They got these no name kids that are running, stealing, bunting. That kid Velasquez yesterday, made, I mean, the dude's shortstop making Ozzy Smith plays. I mean, like. Uh, that play to the end of the game last night was unbelievable, bro. Unbelievable. I'm proud for that now, kid. But here, let's go back to this. If, if that was Gleyber Torres and Luke Voigt at first, the play doesn't happen on either end. So, yeah, so we wanted to, uh, we like to shout out people on the show who are doing, you know, cool things in the hobby. And um, my man Ryan's Vintage Cards, he does something really cool. He does a pack of these. You get five packs of random cards from all era, all the eras for 20 bucks. And um, I, copped, I copped a few from them. And uh, let's just go through them and see what's in here. Each one of these has an auto. Um, obviously, they're not the greatest autos. But, you know, you, you're getting some good cards. You're getting some, you know, you're getting old school. You're getting here. You got even got an auto right here. Oh, nice, man. You know what I'm saying? And then, and then you go in, you got you got uh you got 80s tops. Let's see who else we got in here. Oh, look at this. This is a nice card. Yeah. Right? It's like a really fun, fun thing, man. Fun mix. You got uh and how many cards pool. you get? Oh nice. You get hey, about man. 20 cards. So I mean Please. if you oh, get five packs, you're getting a, you're getting a hundred cards yeah. for twenty bucks. Nice Frank Thomas. Wow. That's I love this set. I, I honestly this is a fun set. Was that 91 Fleer? Yeah, 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 yeah. With the yellow, it's a different thing. It's, but it's crazy. It's such an outlier. Like people either love that or hate it. I think it's cool because it's a it's weird, different, you know, it's, like it's a just a different um so you know, you got he throws so many different so Sounds many different great. years that in there. Pops. Hey, it's look at this. We got, company. you know. Nice smolts. Nice smolts. Uh, I think this is an archive. Yeah, nice books, Robinson. Uh, what else we got in here? Oh, this is a nice card. Nice Manny. 22, uh, yeah, 2008 times. Let's see what else we got. Oh, look at this. This is great. 
Wow, 74 Sandy Alomar. Great card. I love 74 tops. Great, that's great card. that's going to kill me. I was looking forward to 73, 74, and 75 on Topps uh, Heritage, man, Don Ludo. But they're going to stop doing that. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because if they – I mean, who knows what they're going to oh, do. Oh, it's done. Check out this, what, what's in here too. Look, look what else is – look at that. Wow, 71 Hoyt Wilhelm, uh, 1970 Hoyt, Hoyt Wilhelm. That's a great card. And then to end it off, you got a John Mayberry. Nice. But I'm saying, you know, that you know, you're talking about you get five packs of these for 20 bucks. I mean, that's that's really cool what he does for the hobby. And everyone has an auto. So, you know, you get an auto from from any era. So shout out to Ryan's Vintage Cards. Go check him on Instagram, you know, and uh if if you're into cards from all eras for a really low price, really cool. Good stuff. Yo, I want to show you uh a couple of cards that I picked up recently. Uh, you'll appreciate these as a Yankee fan. So I bought this box of uh, 2000 Flair Mystique, right? Ooh. And these cards, man, these are really beautiful cards. Um, let me show you one of them. Like, this is one of the inserts, Sammy Sosa. Damn, like bro. Really nice what, card. What year is that? 2000. Man, that's 21 years ago. Look at that card. It looks like a card from right now. This card is so nice. Really nice. That's a great card. You know, there was like, at that spot I was telling you about in Jersey, yeah. there was like seven packs left. Oh. Or no, nine packs left. And he was like, ah, give me 50 bucks. I was like, all right. Oh, nice. And those are the, those are, that's the set where, um, that's the set where there are five cards in a pack. One of the cards has like this mystery thing over on both ends, like a peel. Dude, what? I said, Bro, it's crazy. I started peeling, and boom, bro. I hit the Jeter. The Jeter. Nah. This card's going right to grading. What? This card is beautiful. I've never even se I've never seen that card. Yeah. It, it, this, bro, when I, I was so I don't even know if I know about that set, really. That's what's crazy. But I, I just want to show you one card, bro, that I think. Uh, yo, this card, man, I think you're going to dig this card. Uh, I know you're going to do this card, but like, yo, you know, growing up, Yankee household, you know, the whole thing, man. The, of course. The white rookie, bro. Oh, man, you dude, beat I me to it, bro. Dude, 19 you beat me bucks, to it. Dude. Go buy one, brother. Get one. I got this card for $19, bro. It's a PSA 6, I think. Yeah. Bro, the card. Bro, what a card. Such a great card. And like, yo. You I know, love we that card. He had better numbers than Phil Rizzuto. He's not in the Hall of Fame. Bro. But like, you know, Bill White's voice growing up as a kid. Classy man, man. Baseball, that's part of my youth, man. Rizzuto and White just going back and forth. Just and like, just think, man. just think from being a, a, a great ball player to being an announcer and then to being the president of the National League. I mean, what a career! He yeah. should be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, Bill White is a legend. He's I mean, come on, pioneer of the game. You know. Speaking uh, of of an old, uh, I bought a. I was in a break for uh, some old NFL football second year Anthony Munoz. Oh, nice, bro. And it's, you know, centered pretty, pretty well. He was great. Yeah, he was Hall of, Fame, sweet. Hall of Fame tackle. Speaking of football, I bought a box of these uh, Tops Finest, and I hit a Curtis Martin rookie. Oh, nice. And you a, mean, these are nice cards, man. That, does that have the, the peel on it? These have the peel. So, you obviously, they work more with, with the peel on. Are they? Yeah. All right. So, so you yeah, for me, I always take off the peel because – the card looks so much better. When but you see, I, I can't say it's worth more because if you really look on, it depends on the person. For me, if I'm going to keep the card, I want the peel off. Right. If I'm going to sell it, right? then there's a I, lot of these anal, exactly anal that. Uh, collectors that want it on. You get what I'm saying? Yep. No, I've heard so, exactly what you're saying right now because I remember at one point I was like looking on Reddit like, should I peel these off? And people were like, exactly what you said is what people said. I spent like two hours, bro, digging through um, two 5,000 or five row boxes. And you might have 4,000 cards each to get these three cards, bro. This, I know this, this is a card that you peel off. It's a Hideki Arabu rookie, bro. This card is ridiculous. What? Bro. So nice. Like, that is. That's what do you call them, the toad? Yeah, remember <laughs> Steinbrenner wasn't playing, man. Yo, Steinbrenner was a savage, bro. Um, this this El Duque, this Orlando Hernandez, uh, like silver refractor. That's nice. 
And that's, um, damn, that's nice. And this petted, bro. This petted Bowman's best. Crazy, oh, man. It's man. It looked nice on there. It's hard to, but this card is like, oh, yeah, that's, right. that's an, that's another ahead of its time card. I mean, look at that. Even like, like I pulled, I got this 95 collector's choice. That's and I a, hit this. I love that card, man. That's you know, it's, a, and it's, it's such like a, a unheard of card. Like you don't even, when you hear Jeter young cards, you don't see this card. I even hit the, I even hit the A-Rod too. That's a nice one. I don't have that one. Yeah. So, you know, you know, and I bought that box for 25 bucks. I mean, so you think about it. Sometimes you just, you search these boxes and you don't know what you're going to even find in there. I mean, that's, what's the great thing about it. And this, and this is another kid who's having a fantastic Max Mayer. Oh, nice, bro. It's a, well, it, this is a dual max, auto. I think uh, I got a Max Mayer auto, man. Bro, I think I pulled kid, it out of like uh, something in tops this year. Bro, he's six and one, one point eight seven ERA in Double A right now. He's crushing it. Wow. His cards are going up too because, I mean, the kid's having a phenomenal year. Oh, you know, it's fun. Max, yeah, I feel like I got that kid's auto somewhere, bro. You probably do, and just that's what I'm saying. Like, like he's best or something. I feel like I have. Yeah. That's yeah. all. That's the cool thing about this, right? Going through the boxes looking for Nestor Cortez rookies and stuff. Bro, the doing day. the same thing as you. I have the Chrome. And then you pulled out that yellow parallel, and I was like, "Oh, that's nice." Yeah. And uh, you want to finish up with the quarter classics, bro? Yeah, let's do it. All right, I'll go for I'll go first today. Okay. Okay. Now, now, one of my favorite non-star plays as a kid, only because I love the way he threw and how smooth he was. He used to wear his hat all high. Remember now, two ninety three career hitter, seventeen seasons. Oh, oh, he's yeah. rookie. Hernandez, bro. What an awesome shortstop, bro. That's a great looking card, too. And That's you know what's funny? I, I bought a pack of these on, on, um, on that Loop app. They were selling some um, 85 tops packs for like, you know, you get two packs, I think, for like 20 bucks. And I was like, you never know. I might hit somebody legendary. I didn't hit anybody, but, you know, it's fun to just crack open. You know, you can't find those. So when I saw it, I said, yo, I, you never know. I might, I might crack them. You know, who knows? But I hit the Tony. And I don't, you know what's funny? I don't have this card. So it was cool to just have a Tony Fernandez joint. He's in the powder blue, Toronto. And, man, people don't realize, 293 career hitter. Dude played 17 seasons. Yeah. Like, dude was one heck of a play. Yeah, it's, it's crazy, man. I, I remember Tony Fernandez, you know. That guy was super he talented. to throw side on. Remember like that? Yeah, yeah. Dude was like just so athletic, you know. Um, yeah, bro, that's a dope one. I got uh all right, so you know, this card, this is I just think it's I feel fun. like you're it's, gonna have I feel like you're gonna have something incredible, right? Here. Yo, this this card's pretty crazy. First of all, it's numbered. It's numbered, but yo, dude, got Mike Social with the Italian hand movements, bro. Nah. Yeah, yeah. Dogs, nah. Come on. Bro, he, this dude remind he's like some Uncle G shit right there. Oh, like what 100%, is hundred percent, bro? That movement, like yeah, bro. Yo, that old school, and they had that. They had the hand right here, bro. Yo, put that up again, bro. Yo, that is great. Yo, the, 